Well, uh, let's discuss the implications of this ruling further. Uh, Aaron Heselhurst and uh, Fidelis Mba uh, from BBC African Service. First of all, Aaron, I mean, mm. just looking at this from a business perspective, Shell will have been seen to get off quite lightly, considering ah. what was, was being alleged here. Yeah, no, absolutely. We've been watching this very, very closely because you're, you're watching it and wondering, depending on the court ruling, would this set a precedent for the multinationals? But as you say, and, and, and Anna mentioned, and even BP in a statement, I mean, sorry, Shell in a statement, got off quite lightly indeed but you can't stress enough and the reason we're watching it for to set a precedent is you can't stress enough the amount of oil that is spilt in the Niger Delta and the Niger Delta I mean and not only be um, I keep saying BP I'm sorry not only Shell but of course um, the, the likes of Exxon Exxon Mobil we're talking about uh, the accusations of very old infrastructure old pipelines uh, etc that just and not only the sabotage but just uh, leak and I, I'm sure Fidelis you can sort of take it further and just talk about the amount of I mean the, the world was focused when we had that oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, it was a huge story. The President of the United States went to look at the damage, and yet we've got oil leaks something like almost daily, 300, apparently, 300 oil leaks a year in the Niger Delta. It is, Fidelis, it is quite phenomenal, isn't it? The amount of oil that is spilled by these multinationals. Well, the thing is, these oil spills occur almost on a daily basis, and many of them get unreported. And the case again is, you're talking about the Gulf of you know, Mexico where the president had to go. But then in Nigeria, when these things happen, you even rarely see even local government, you know, politicians come to the scene. You only see the locals go to the area. Maybe a few uh, uh, junior officials from these oil companies who visit to just have like an on-the-spot assessment and then with promises of, okay, we'll get back to you. Some of these locals even make complaints, try to go to court and most times they are frustrated and then they end up just leaving it there. And what will, do you think the reaction be uh, in the Niger Delta uh, that this has happened today? I mean, is this just going to be part of a, a continuing discontent with, with the multinationals, uh, people locally not seeing themselves as, as sharing in the wealth that's generated and, and also suffering? Well, there are two things to this. <clears throat> with, with, with what ha has happened today, with the court ruling, more communities are now going to start putting up their own case together because they've got loads of evidence about oil spills because this is an area you know populated mainly by fishermen and farmers and when these oil spills happen it impacts negatively on their source of livelihood and so most of them as we speak now are actually not even able to make ends meet so i'm very sure that most communities will be encouraged by the court ruling to also want to go to court to seek for justice not just, yeah, Shell might to some extent have, you know, more like, you know, this is not like the judgment that the people from the Niger Delta would have expected. But this is a good precedent in terms of trying to take it further from today's ruling. Fidel, can I just um, uh, ask you this? I mean, the, for those on the ground in the Niger Delta, obviously they point the blame at the oil companies and the multinationals down there. But is there some um, acknowledgement of the, the sabotage? I mean, that, that, that takes place quite regularly doesn't it i mean you've got heavy armed militants who blow up these uh these pipelines and they actually uh steal oil i mean they, i think it's called bunkering isn't it yeah there are two sides to this coin you know the oil companies are also liable in terms of not properly maintaining their pipelines mm. some of these pipelines are as old as 50 years mm. some are even mm. more some and these pipelines run across the communities so the you know the community is not properly maintained and replaced when they should so sometimes because of, they've been old, they can, you know, just on their own burst and then mm -hmm. result to oil spills. But again, the community people, some of them, because there's so much money to be made from siphoning oil, there's so much sabotage in the Niger Delta, you can't rule that out, mm -hmm. which is actually what Shell and other multinational oil companies have been complaining about. Daily, you see people going to break up these pipelines and, you know, extract this oil, which they refine, because in the Niger Delta, you have loads of illegal refineries. In fact, every, almost... There are some communities that you go, almost uh, every 10 meters, there's an illegal refinery. And this is something that goes on because mm. they're making so much money. And if you ask them, they'll tell you that these are our resources. And this, are, you know, this is just like the only way we can help ourselves. Mm. Fidelis, thank you very much. Fidelis Barr from the BBC African Service. Aaron, we'll be hearing more from you very shortly. Yep. Thank you very much. And plenty Thanks. more on this uh, story to come here on BBC 